Okay, welcome back to the Milwaukee Project. This was the grouping of products that I had most in mind when I was thinking about this. It's one of the most confusing aspects of the Milwaukee tool line. Uh, one of the tools that I use, you know, probably about half as much as, uh, as some of the other little, little tools, but these are all part of the M18 line, so I'm skipping ahead a little bit here, because this, I think, uh, this cleans off my shelves the most. Notice it's starting to thin out in the back there. Uh, but this is, uh, these are the, the impacts. So the, the hex impact driver or, or anvil type driver kits. Uh, and, uh, and so I selected from the catalog pretty much all of them. Um, one of them was discontinued. Uh, another one is on back order. Uh, and then there are four other one key versions that I didn't order that, you know, they make a one key version of some of these tools. Uh, one key is the app based platform uh, for tracking if you're managing a job site or something like that, which we don't need. Generally, that adds 30 to $50 per tool. Uh, that, that we don't need access to. Uh, but we've got 22 different tools that all do pretty much the exact same thing, which is to do some sort of higher torque impact of us for cars. We're gonna use it most often on, uh, on lug nuts. Um, I've used these to drive in concrete anchors and brake break, you know, stubborn heavy duty bolts like suspension bolts and, and things like that. So um, this does get used. This is probably gonna be one of the more expensive tools in your electric tool line. Um, but uh, most of these pretty much eliminate the need for, uh, for a pneumatic version of this. And so like the rest of the series, uh, again, I, I don't wanna call this a deep dive. This is just a unboxing and a touching and feeling of 22 different uh, impacts. And then um, we'll continue to deep dive into these in the future when I eventually talk to Milwaukee engineers and learn more about the battery technology and probably tear some of these things apart. Uh, so over time, again, I don't propose to be an expert at this moment, um, but I'm, uh, I'm a, a dangerous, dangerous shopper at this point, considering I'm probably the first person in history to buy pretty much every single tool they make uh, in the, uh, the electric line. But the goal here at the end of this video is to at least be able to kind of shuffle these around and assess which ones make sense. I know that it's kind of dumb to buy some of the original Milwaukee or, or the, uh, the original uh, Milwaukee brushless stuff, um, but I don't, know, I, I don't know unless I try it. Sometimes the uh, baseline stuff might be nicer than the fuel line, but I suspect we'll probably end up with something like this in, in, our, in our setup. So let's start with, I'm going so, sort of in order. Uh, this is the Milwaukee catalog. You can see um, there's uh, however many, 40 pages, 35 pages of, of tools. And so I've kind of been carrying this thing around for the last three months, three or four months or so, trying to figure out which ones uh, which which tools I want. I think the total catalog is 78 pages or 80 pages, something like that. I printed out the pages that matter. I got rid of the rest of the fluff and I've been carrying this around and scribbling. I think this is the fourth or fifth time I've, I've printed this, but scribbling and scratching and writing and pricing and all of that uh, so that uh, I can come to you with some, some educated information. So this one here is uh, one of my favorite tools. Uh, I use this probably more than anything else. Uh, this is the hex type or hex impact driver. Uh, so it has a, a pole or a pin driven um, um, hex where you can put on an anvil, you can put on a, um, uh, you know, a, a flathead or a, or a a Torx driver, whatever the heck you want, you can put on the end of this. Uh, and so I use this thing quite often. Uh, and so this was the one at the top left of the sheet. And so we'll kind of go through this one first. Now, they do make this in a, in a one key version, which of course I don't think we need. I certainly won't be carrying it. Uh, but this one retails for $2.99 uh, with the kit as you see it. Uh, but they also sell the bare tool. Uh, and so I'll probably sell both. Uh, and uh, because once you start to build your arsenal of batteries, uh, if you buy the bare tool, it's 139 bucks. You know, so you're paying what, 160 bucks for the batteries, which is still less expensive than the batteries cost on their own. So you're getting this plastic thing, which I, I would end up throwing away. Um, so you get the, uh, the carrying case, you get the charger. This is an M18 only. Oh no, 
Yeah, it does, these come with a dual M12, M18 charger. Uh, so it comes with the charger and then comes with a couple of batteries and then also comes with a little bit here. Man, it looks so pretty when it's new. So you can see operation, you would pull the bit out and it holds your traditional, whatever these things are called, hex, hex type, I think is, you know, it has six sides. Your six sided, this is a PH2, uh, so it comes with a little key here. I tend to use a little bit longer one. You know, Milwaukee has a ton of different versions. The goal here at the end of this game is to have a recommended accessory kit of what bits and all the things you're going to want. So we're going to get there, uh, but we're going to take it one step at a time. So it has three different modes. So you have a speed one, speed two, speed three, and then a drill version. Uh, and then your battery also has, the M18 batteries have a indicator light. You press the button on the front and then to remove the batteries on all the M18 stuff, you push the two buttons and pull off. And they have several different versions. I'm gonna have a whole battery series coming at the, at sort of the end of this project uh, with all the different versions, but these come with an XC 5.0 and then snaps into place. Also has the belt buckle or, you know, pocket holder. I don't know if you can see that, Mike, but uh, this here where you can put it on your on your belt if you want. I don't have a belt on today, but this, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, I've had this thing. This is probably the first tool I've ever, I ever bought. They do sound a little different than, than my older tools. I, I believe they've continued to improve the, the, the motors, these are brushless, so there shouldn't really be any maintenance to it. Uh, but these come with a tool. Uh, I haven't talked a lot about warranties, but the tool is a five-year warranty and the battery is a three-year warranty. And Milwaukee's warranty platform is freaking awesome. Just make sure you buy it from the right place. You have to buy it from an authorized Milwaukee dealer. Of course, I am one. Um, but if you buy it from the wrong uh, dealer, like Amazon is not authorized. So you got to be careful where you're getting these things. Um, there's companies that are, you know, they're trying to shut down the sale on Amazon all the time, but third parties, it's not Amazon selling them, it's some third party. Uh, and so again, two batteries and the charger, we're going to kind of put these aside so I can work through this here. We're going to kind of build our, our little, little setup here. But this, again, this is by far one of my favorite tools. The combination of this and the M12 quarter inch hex bit version, it's just such a great combo to have. This one has a little more torque, a little heavier duty. Uh, so this one will get you uh, 2000 inch pounds. And just to compare, and we'll be doing some M12 comparisons in the future. Uh, but the, let's see, if we did the quarter inch non-surge version, of the, where is it? Yeah, the quarter inch. So it does 1,300 versus 2,000 inch pounds. Uh, so you get uh, quite a bit more output from the 18 volt version, but you also get quite a bit more weight. I mean, this one weighs 3.8 pounds versus the M12 version was 1.8 pounds. So, you know, quite a bit, quite a bit heavier duty. Uh, uh, he quite a bit heavier and a little heavier duty torque uh, you get uh, you get 2,000 inch pounds of, of torque from that. All right, so let's set this aside and let's look at the regular Milwaukee version. So they have several of these. So this is the hex version, hex version. So they have, and some of these are part of their older line and I don't know these very well. Uh, so this is a, th these are CT versions. Anytime you'd see a CT, that means with the it comes with the 2.0 or the, the CP size batteries. So when you get a CT kit, uh, and this one doesn't have an option for a regular kit. So they don't sell these with an XC battery, they only sell it with a CP battery. Uh, and so, and the CP batteries have a two-year warranty instead of a three-year warranty. The XC batteries get a, get a little better warranty on the, on the fuel line. But you still get the kit. Notice the, the box. You can always tell a regular Milwaukee because the fuels have a black bottom, red top. These are all red. Comes with two batteries. That's interesting. Comes with a, a battery so it doesn't drain it. So this is, this is a brushless tool. 
It says it right on the side. Uh, has a metal head. Uh, same same basic idea, but it's a single speed, you know, forward and reverse. Uh, and notice again, you're getting the CP 2.0 battery, so the battery capacity isn't going to be as great. Uh, and this one here, so this is 1,600 inch pounds versus 2,000 on the fuel version. And you can really feel the weight difference. Um, it, largely because of the battery. Uh, this is 2.9 pounds, so if you take the battery out of the equation, uh, this, uh, this model again is the 285022CT. Uh, if you take the battery out of the equation, it's, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, it's still a, almost a pound less. So all the, all the weight specs they're giving you without the battery. So just this, just this alone is 3.8 pounds, and then of course you can put the battery in, it's probably doubling, doubling the weight of it. Uh, when we start to deep dive into these, when I get the full line out, I'll get a little scale out and we'll be, we'll be kind of wrapping up and digging more into the, into the product line as we, you know, as we make the choice. I don't think, for me, it doesn't make sense. Uh, this one's 200 bucks, this one's 300 bucks. Right, so hundred dollars more for you know if, if I know that this exists, and I don't want this one, but I want to have it here so we can we can test it out. Doesn't come with any kind of bit, but again, does come with the extra 2.0 battery. It's probably not a bad idea to have 2.0 batteries laying around uh, in case you needed something lighter, if you're traveling or something like that. I just find that. I have several of the 2.0 batteries and I very rarely use them. Okay, so now this is the same device, uh, but non, I believe this is a non, the non brushless version. Yeah, so we have the, the, the brushless, which was $199, and now you get the same one, a little less output, so $1,600 inch pounds of, of torque capability versus 1500 uh, and then uh, this one uh, this one here weighs quite a bit more so this brushless design is a little lighter let me just show you the difference here so again brushes versus brushless brushes mean that you would need to eventually put or replace the brushes. So the two brushes contact, I believe it's the stator, uh, which great basically takes current from the from the battery, trigger then, you know, completes the circuit. Uh, and when the trigger completes the circuit, the brushes then touch the, I guess the trigger makes the brushes touch the stator to complete the circuit to the battery, causing the motor to spin. Yeah, this one's ugly. I don't like this. batteries toast uh, and so this one comes with uh, these okay so CP 2.0 so the brushes comes with the CP 2.0 battery and then the brushed version the base base version comes with the CP 1.5 battery so one and a half amp hours and these are all these batteries are dead just to show you operation. By the way, all these batteries are universal across, across fuel and regular. Yeah. Metal head, single speed, versus, you know, again, the fuel has, has four different speeds, four different torque specs. So, this one even, you can even smell the motor. You can hear the difference in, in how it sounds. So for 20 bucks, that doesn't make any sense, I don't think, to do this versus this. A little bit smaller head, a little bit lighter, same basic operation, but I think that's sort of a no-brainer that you would buy this. Uh, and then to me, again, I'm going to spend the extra 100 bucks and get the best version. So I think those are the three. Um, yeah, so then there's, then there's one more that was back order that I didn't get. So they make a two-speed version of, the, of, this, of this thing here. Uh, but I don't believe, yeah, it's not brushless. So they make a two-speed version of this. Uh, and they make that two-speed version with 
um, they do XC 3.0 batteries. This, this gets really confusing. So, how does this thing go in here? I think it goes that way. How the heck did this go in here? I'll put it there. So let me explain. Let's see if I can get my head straight on all of this. So the one that I'm missing is the is the 2657-222 speed. So they take this tool, the brushed version, they make a two speed option, and then they add in an XC 3.0 battery pack version for $299. But again, if you're getting into $299, it makes no sense you would buy the fuel. So I think for our purposes, Obsessed Garage purposes, we can scrap that. It kind of stinks. I wanted to have the complete set so I could lay them all out here for the photo, but... Um, yeah, I don't think it. I don't think it really matters. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention on the fuel is it does have the little quick stay spot where you can put in your you can put in your you know your, your hex bit in there for future use in case you were using an anvil or something like that to put on a socket. Okay, so the last version of the quarter inch hex bit, which I'm most excited about is the Surge version. So this is the 2760-22. And I wanna get further clarification in the future here how the hydraulic, the fluid drive works. Um, you know, there's a picture of it on the side here. Uh, but the Surge is the same exact thing as this. Uh, and so what they do is they put a, um, a what do they, they say, it's a, it reduces metal to metal impact for quieter operation. Uh, so I believe there's just inside of the, you know, inside of the head of the machine, the very last output. You know how when you, when you, when you drive an impact, you take an impact and drive it in. Uh, go back and watch the, the M12 video uh, where I showed the difference between the surge and the non-surge. But the, the, the way it drives or applies torque to the, you know, to the, to the you know, whatever you're driving in, whether it's a, a, a nut or a screw, um, this one doesn't do that clickety-clack all the way in. It just drives it in much smoother. So the price difference on the two, so this Surge, again, this is the 2760-22. You would compare it directly to the 2853-22. Again, 22 means two batteries. Uh, it comes with two batteries. If it's 2-0, it means the tool only. So the Surge is 329, uh, so it's 30 bucks more than the traditional impact version. And they sell this in three different versions. They sell it with the XC 5.0 batteries. They sell it with the CP 2.0 batteries. Uh, that's called the two. That's called the 22CT kit. And then they sell it as the bare tool. So this is 329, 249 with the with the CT kit, and 149 as the bare tool. So I don't think anybody would really buy it as a CT kit. I don't think we're going to carry that. Just don't like those little baby batteries. Yeah. So the surge comes with a there's like a neoprene cover. So it sounds pretty pretty similar. And we'll go grab a two by four at the end here. But when we're driving in the screw, it doesn't have that ratcheting sound to it. Yeah. Surge. Surge is the way to go, bros. For 30 bucks more, it's a freaking no-brainer. What I'd like to know over time, I'm gonna you know, dig into this deeper as, as we finalize the product line. What I'd like to know is from the engineers, what's the disadvantage? Why would you why would you not just use the use the, the surge forever? You know, why would you why would you ever buy the other one? So the surge is 450 inch pounds of output versus the regular. No, that can't be right. I think they've it's 450 foot pounds. Uh, it says inch pounds on here, but it's foot pounds versus 2,000 inch pounds. So you could do the the quick um, conversion there, um, but it's roughly. 
see 2,000 inch pounds, so divide that by 12, what is that? Let me get my calculator. So if we go 2,000 divided by 12, yeah, 166 foot pounds. So it's almost, what, three times the output? You know, two and a half times the uh, the torque capability, and uh, has the same three-speed option. So the case, the setup is very similar. Uh, notice the back. So it looks as though that you know that this is the newest and latest design. Uh, the back of it is is the uh, the original back or brushless version or the fuel version. I think my old version. Let's see here. Yeah. Yeah, so here is my original version of this. So they have shortened it up a bit. Uh, and so this one still has the longer, so the Surge still has the slightly longer, bulkier head. Hmm. The question is, I have to think about this. The question is, would you have both of them? Would you want both of them in a perfect world? I think you only need one. So we go speed three. Yeah, I mean the uh, four, uh, zero to three thousand RPMs is the surge, and the regular is uh, zero to thirty six hundred RPMs. So this one is a little faster. This one's just torquier. Hmm. But this is also their ultra modern, their latest iteration, their latest most compact head design. You can see the slight difference in depth of the head. And then this one's 3.8 pounds. The Surge version is 3.9 pounds, so a tenth of a pound. So they've shaved a tenth of a pound off of the head here and uh, probably made the serviceability a little better. Single screw versus dual. Hmm, interesting. Something we'll have to play with more. Okay, we'll be here all day if I don't keep moving. So let's keep moving. So now we get into the anvil type versions. And so these two are the same machine. Both 349 bucks, both uh, 189 bucks without a battery. Uh, it's just the difference between, we'll talk about this here, the difference between a, uh, this is a 2755B versus a 2755. One has a friction ring and one has a pin detent. I'm going to show you that in a second. So I find myself very rarely using this tool. I have this one, just the older version of it. Uh, I find myself very rarely using it. I'm either going to use a quarter inch and just put an anvil on it, or I'm going to grab like a big, you know, half inch impact, you know, a much, much higher output impact. So these here, these will provide us with, um, let's see. Uh, they provide us with 220 foot-pounds of torque. I mean, this little guy does 450. So, the only advantage is you have a half-inch pin detent, meaning that there's a little ball-bearing pin here that you push in to put your socket on. Come with two XC 5.0 batteries, metal head, these weigh in at 4.2 pounds, so it's relatively heavy in comparison to the other guy. So it's you know four, almost a half a pound more. Uh, you get less torque than you would with this, but more torque. See, these two would have been your complements um, uh, that that you would get more more torque. About uh, what uh, 40, 60 foot pounds more torque output. I find that these aren't enough torque, even though it's rated at 220, not enough torque to be super efficient at removing lugs from your, from your car. So that's the pin detent version, and then the friction ring version. This is all personal preference. The friction ring meaning you can just pull it off and on, where this one will lock in place with the pin, the ball bearing pin. I believe it's a ball bearing. 
same thing comes with the charger. So all of these have come with the charger versus the head of this has a friction ring. To me, both are equally annoying when trying to get the socket off. I find that this is easier to get the socket off. This is easier to get the socket on, right? Um, so this one's harder, so the friction ring is a little harder to get the socket on. Uh, and then this one is a little harder to get the socket off. But the both same identical machines, 275, 2755-2755B. Or I have that backwards. 2775B is the friction ring and then the regular original is here. Again, I'm really torn. I just find that there are luxury items, but I think you're going to find here in a minute that we'll actually want one with more output. Unless you just have money to burn. I don't think it makes sense. And so here's the regular Milwaukee version. This would be a brushed version, unless it says brushless, it's a brushed version. This is a 2659-22, uh, price on is 319, and uh, 149 is the cost without the batteries. This should come with a CP, oh no, it comes with XC. So this does come with an XC 3.0, versus all of these were coming with a 5.0, a 5 amp hour battery. Uh, and so this one, you can even see the brushes make the connection. Just not very smooth. You can smell the brushes making contact. Uh, but for, you know, for the cost, 319 for, what is it, 30 bucks more, I can get the fuel version. This one weighs 4.1 pounds. So it's a little bit lighter, a tenth of a pound lighter. But it just feels feels clunky and it's only 183 foot pounds of torque so again I'd still rather have the little quarter inch guy so the 2659-22 and it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense so then we get into the big boys so let's go to the next page here so the next page we get into our half inch versions half inch and three eighths uh, so this one here is a 2861-22, so this one's 400 bucks. So now we're getting into the expensive stuff. Uh, and so 400 bucks for the, for the kit, and then 199 for the tool uh, without, without the batteries. So this is a half inch mid-torque, and when they say mid-torque, it's 450 foot-pounds. It's pretty amazing this little guy gets I'm pretty sure that's not a typo I'm pretty sure that this this gets 450 foot-pounds unless there's a typo yeah it, it's it's 450 foot-pounds on the surge version but this set up with what do these come with XC are these still 5.0 yeah 5.0 batteries yeah yeah so half inch friction ring version comes with three speeds. There's no drill speed on this like there is on the, on the little ones, on the quarter inch. I don't think you'd ever use this for, for, for drilling. Uh, but this, speed one, speed two, speed three, and we get 450 foot-pounds of torque on, on the mid-torque. So again, still appropriate for removing lugs. Get two batteries, get the charger. Uh, this is the dual M12, M18 charger. Um, I don't think I have this one. It feels actually not too bad from a weight perspective. It's 5.3 pounds. And this is the friction ring version. And in this half inch, they only make... Oh yeah, they do have a pin detent as well. So I'll have to grab that out of the batch. What's up guys? How you doing? Sorry, I'm in the... In the throes of figuring stuff out yeah so metal head I think this one this sort of gets so confusing we've made so many different versions of these over the years 
that it's hard to remember which one's which. We're going to find out. So that's the friction ring. And then they make the same thing with a 252... 2860. Okay, so this is the half inch mid torque with the pinned head. So, again, personal preference. The price is the same $399, $299. The tool is the same, it just has a different anvil on it. And I don't think you can change anvils, you're kind of stuck with what you pick in the beginning. So, you have the. And on some sockets, I found you need to stick like a little pick in there. In order to get the uh, the get the socket to remove, but you can see it's same exact everything, with the exception of this. I couldn't I couldn't see. I, I guess if you are if you are a mega baller, you could just get both of them. You know, so it's 400 bucks just in case one day you're feeling like a uh, friction ring versus the, the you know, removing the pin. And again, these are fuel tools and, and both do 450 foot pounds of, uh, of output. The next one, god dang, this is, this is complicated. So then we go to, they also have a 3 8 version. Okay, sorry, I had some visitors, got a little sidetracked there. Uh, so 3 8 both mid-torque, there's a compact and then there's the regular mid-torque version. So we're going to open these up and compare. So the compact is 349 bucks as a kit. They also do this in the um, in the CP version, CP batteries for 279, which we don't really care about. And they also sell it with tool only for 189. Uh, so 349 versus 399. Uh, and the difference, they both come with XC 5.0 batteries. Uh, it's just that one is um, one is a compact version, and it doesn't say compact on the box. It's just called the 3 8 impact wrench with friction ring. Uh, but this one is rated at 210 foot-pounds of torque. This one is rated at 450. So really, it just comes down to how much output do you need. So let's just see the difference here. The weight difference is 4.2 versus 5.3 pounds. So it's a pound lighter. So I'm kind of interested in these. And then these will have a 3 8 inch anvil for your sockets. Once again, I don't know how much these really apply. These are kind of luxury items. It comes like that and then it has an extra battery and the charger just like all of them do. Yeah, so this is a real confusing proposition having so many different versions of all this stuff, but I think by the end here it's going to make a lot of sense when we get them all laid out. It's going to make it pretty simple to choose, you know, which one's which. Which one do you want? Yeah. So this is essentially the same body. I don't know why they call this. This is just the... It doesn't say it doesn't say mid torque on on the case. It only says mid torque on the on the on the document. So uh, what you basically have here is you have the half inch. They just make a three eighths inch version, All right, So it looks like this. So these are the exact same devices, just with a different different friction ring on it. And uh, and then they make a bigger 3 8 version of these tools. So this is probably would have been better to open it up like this where it goes like this. Half 3 8 half, half, half 3 8 kind of set up like that. And they don't make, they don't really, I guess we're going to get into it. I guess they do make a, a Milwaukee version of these as well. So let's keep opening and we'll kind of dig into the differences here as I organize my thoughts. Okay, yeah, so here's the, here's the Milwaukee version, the regular M18, the non, 
non-fuel version. This one's 319, 249, or 149 without any batteries. So there you have it. And these come with XC 3.0 batteries, just like, just like the other. So you got half inch, three eighths. Now the question is, do they make this? Yeah, this is where it gets complicated. They don't make it, they don't give you an option. So on this one, you only have pin detent. On this one, you only have friction ring. Same thing here, only have friction ring. Interesting. I'll clarify this all in a minute here once we make sure we get through all these. Okay. So then, half inch high torque. So we get into the high torque stuff. High torque. High torque. High torque. Okay. Yeah, so let's get this organized here. So this is my old machine. So we have the quarter inch guys. So quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch surge. Then we have our compacts. So these are all half inch impact, half inch with pin, half inch. Okay, so the fuel half inchers, these are 220 foot pounds. Because yeah, they have the A and the B in this tool. Then in the 3 8 so 3 8 doesn't have. Yeah, so the compact version, compact friction ring, friction ring. So I, I don't think they make this in a pin detent, only a friction ring. So that's the 3 8 version. Uh, and uh, this one gives you this uh, 210 foot pounds. Yeah, so 210, 210 versus 220. So the half inch gives you 220. And then you have the regular Milwaukee version, the regular M18 version, both brushed not not brushless uh, and so they that's kind of weird they make half inch pin detent and then three h and three eighths in friction ring only that's really odd that they don't give you both options they give you one or the other in, in each size so these kind of all go together and then we get into the mid-torque stuff. So these are the mid-torque machines. So these machines do, uh, and you have three eighths, single three eighths version, and then you have the two half inch versions. Uh, and so let me go to the next page here. Yeah, so half inch, these are half inch mid-torque with a friction ring. So the three eighths is 210 foot pounds. And then let's see. So that's compact. So two ten, three eighths. Okay, four hundred and fifty foot pounds on three eighths, and then four hundred and fifty foot foot pounds on half inch. And the half inch they make in both. What am I doing wrong here? So half inch mid torque, friction ring, friction ring pin detent. Where the heck is that? Half inch compact. Two five eight five two. There it is on the bottom. Two eight six zero. Sorry, they just make this kind of confusing and complicated. Half inch at the top and the bottom. Okay, I see how it's going here. So three eighths, three eighths, three eighths. So there's three three eighths machines. 
three eighths, three eighths, three eighths. So actually it kind of goes like this, three eighths, three eighths, three eighths. And then you got four half inch machines like this. So we go three eighths version, three eighths version, three eighths version, all friction ring only. So mid torque, compact, regular M18. And then we go half inch friction ring, half inch pin detent, mid torque, and then you go compact, you go half inch friction ring, half inch pin detent in the compact, and then half inch regular Milwaukee. I don't think I want any of them. So, so let's, let's figure that out. Okay, that makes more sense to me now. Hope that makes sense to you. There are half inches there. And now let's go into our high torque versions and we'll compare. So your mid torque half inch versus three eighths, so 450, 450, nut busting torque, 600 foot pounds, got it. Okay, so now let's get into the high torque, and right here there's, we got a rogue one, which is the one inch, the one inch monster. So let's, I'm kind of interested to unbox this one. This one's a thousand bucks. This is 2867-22, it's 999 or 699, and these come with HD batteries. So this is our first unboxing of anything that comes in the HD variety, but this sucker's heavy. So without the battery, this one's 12.9 pounds. This has 1,500 foot-pounds of torque, and what they say, nut busting, nut busting torque, 1,800 foot-pounds. And it should have four modes, and it's gonna come with two batteries. So if you buy it with no batteries as a tool only, it's 300 bucks less. So you can see these batteries are pretty, pretty spicy, pretty expensive. You get a nice little little case. I bet you. Oh, it's kind of cool how that opens. Opens like that. Here's what it looks like inside. Manual. Monster batteries. So these are nine amp hour batteries. Eight amp hour batteries. HD batteries go up to go up, go up to 12 amp hours. I'm pretty sure. So look at that puppy. The one thing I want to clarify in the future when we deep dive into this, I'm pretty sure all the weights of these things are the weight of the machine and not the the actual the actual drill or impact. You got a secondary handle and not the. Uh, not just the battery, or not with the battery. So we got a rapid charger. So this charger, the rapid charger is a little different than all the chargers we were looking at on all the other machines. They were just the standard version. Oh, well, this is a one key machine. They don't make this in a non one key. We talked about one key earlier. Oh shoot. Yeah. I don't think we'll be needing this. One inch anvil. Stop. This tool requires activate, activation to track and secure. That would be your one key. Here's our second battery. So let's put this sucker on here. <laughs> That's what 1,500 foot-pounds of torque feels like. And so you don't break your arm in half. I think you put this on here. Let's go break some lug nuts off of the uh, off the M3. This monster. So clearly this is a tool that I don't think we're gonna need. It has four speeds. Let's 
go speed one, two, three, four. You got the handle. Yeah, that thing's no joke. It's got a uh, rubberized front, but this thing weighs, you know, 12. Without the battery, it weighs almost 13 pounds, 12.9 pounds. Uh, 1650 RPM is the highest speed, but you can feel the, you can feel the torque. <laughs> yeah, that's a thousand bucks. Hey, I don't know if we need it unless I touch it. I was pretty sure we didn't need it, but I wanted to see what it was all about. Let's just set this aside here. <laughs> it kind of dwarfs all the others, but we'll set this in the back. Put the big guy in the back there. Okay, so let's get into the more practical, probably more, more useful high torque version. So this is a 2864-22. Uh, this one I don't think you'll want as much either. This only comes in one key, uh, and this is the uh, three-quarter inch version. Uh, so this is uh, basically the baby version, the one we just opened. This one's 529 bucks. If you buy just the tool, uh, the tool is 299. So 230 bucks less if you go just tool and not the kit. But then you wouldn't get the batteries. And this comes with two XC batteries. So this might be one of those ones where it makes sense to just buy the device. So all the all the one key devices have this, you know, have this stop, you need to activate it. So three quarter inch anvil. This one does uh, 1,200 foot-pounds, uh, so 300 foot-pounds less than the $1,000 big guy. This is pretty darn heavy. I mean, 7.9 pounds without the battery, uh, but it does come with the XC batteries, not the HD batteries. And I don't believe, let's see, will the HD batteries fit? I think they do. I think you can still put an HD battery on a non-HD, yeah. So the HD batteries will work and will fit on a regular tool. Any M18, even if we use one of these little guys, I think you can still take and use a big HD battery on it. You just get more life out of it, but then you add a quite a bit of weight to it. So that's the three quarter high torque. Let's keep that over here. not drop that. Now let's get into the half inch versions. I'm just kind of following along with the uh, with the Milwaukee guide. Imagine trying to order all this stuff. It's freaking brutal. This video might be three parts before we get through it. So this is the fuel version. This is 449 bucks, half inch high torque. Uh, this one does, let's see, this one does 750 foot pounds of torque. 449 bucks or 249 bucks. Comes with two XC batteries, XC 5.0s. Yeah, this is the one I have. I just have an older version of it has three speeds uh, and then has a sensing, a torque sensing speed, or I believe it, it ramps up. Uh, but this this one is probably you know, one of the more useful ones. Uh, this was the pin detent version. Uh, and I think that they also have a friction ring version of this tube, but we're gonna get into that. So there's the three quarter, the half inch. Let's unbox, I think the three quarter kind of gotten out of order here. Should have done the three-quarter non-fuel. That's this one here. Oops, shoot. This one's 469 bucks versus the three-quarter fuel. I'm gonna go, oh, the three-quarter fuel was 529, so 469 versus 529. 
This still comes with uh, XC batteries, but this comes with 3.0, 3 amp hour batteries. Yeah, that's ugly. That's a brushed. You can even hear it, see it. So this would be, go here. But yeah, you definitely want the fuel version for, what is that, 40, 70 bucks more. Get better batteries, but it does come with two. You get better batteries. Actually, what charger does this come with? I think these all come with the, uh, yeah, the dual, the not the rapid charger, but the regular M12, M18 charger. So you have to start asking yourself when you're buying all these, at what point do you start buying tool only? If you have, you know, a bunch of bunch of tools, you probably don't need 80 different batteries. I guess it depends on how, how you're gonna use it. And so here's the half inch version of the M18. This is 399. So this is the complement or the lower end model. XC 3.0, same exact body, so these are all the same. So the non-fuel versions of these, so 525 foot-pounds of torque on both of them. Nope. So the half inch, yeah, the half inch is 450 foot-pounds, 525 foot-pounds on the three-quarter, 1,200 foot-pounds on the fuel versus 750 on the half. So the fuel torque output is considerably higher than it is on the regular. So then we got one that I'm really excited about. So let's get back in here. So that was half inch. Let's come back to the anvil one. The long anvil. So this is the friction ring version. So they do make two of these. They make a, this is a 2767, which is the same price, 449 or 249, same price as the pin detent version. But this half inch here, XC 5.0 batteries. So these two are the same. It's just a choice of whether you want the, the pin detent or the friction ring anvil. Anvil. Been living in the south too long. Okay. And then they make the same thing here. So the three quarter, you don't get a choice. But in the half inch, you do. 2663-22. So this is the regular version. That does 450 foot pounds. That just has both options. So the half inch version, you get both fuel and regular M18 pin detent friction ring. Same prices. Yeah. 399 for each. Yeah, 399. These ones are 449. So 50 bucks more for the fuel seems like a no-brainer to me. Then you have this awesome one here that I'm pretty certain I want in my arsenal. This is a now it only comes in one key, so you're paying an extra 30 bucks or so for that that you're probably never gonna use. But if you wanted to track down your tool, you could. So make sure you activate it, use the app. That's interesting, comes with a bag instead of a case, probably because the case would be an odd size because this one has a half inch anvil on it. Comes with two XC 5.0s. Same charger as all the others. This is our 5.0. And 
then you get the extended anvil. Pull off our activation piece. Oh yeah, that's cool. This, I think I'm gonna use more than anything. This one gives you 750 foot pounds, same as the regular ones, 549 bucks, 349 if you do it without the batteries, and it weighs 5.8 pounds, so a little bit heavier, but it's the same as these, so it probably belongs like right here. They all have the same housing, the same head, same everything with the exception of you have this extension here and it only comes in friction ring that's the only option you get got two more and then we'll kind of gather our thoughts on this rather rather extensive unboxing here there's only one way to figure this stuff out actually there's more than one way but my way is to buy it all and try it all so we got these two that I don't even know what the heck they are. It's a hex utility, hex utility high torque. Maybe you can tell me what they are, because I don't freaking know. So we've been doing the fuel one first. So let's do the fuel first. Run out of space here. Let's put these ugly ones in the back. So these are. Uh, a hex utility, so I'm assuming it's the same as these quarter inch ones. It's a 7 16 hex. So I think you just need special tools, a special hex to go in here. Let's just take a look. The torque on this is 750 foot pounds, is the same as the other half inch machines. Set this on the side. This comes with two XC 5.0 batteries. You've got a theme going here. Has the ring on top. This is a one key only. So they don't sell it without one key. My guess is they'll probably move the whole line to one key. And I'm not sure what the uh, long-term plan is. You know, these are some of the things I'm gonna figure out as time goes on, as I get more and more information about the stuff. Yeah. So, quick lock, it's a 7 16 bit. That's kind of interesting. I'm assuming Milwaukee sells these tools, so we're gonna have to dig into the accessories of that. I actually kind of dig that. I didn't think I would. I don't know what that's all about. There's a car lighter, I guess the charge in the car. So let's see, that's the charger. This comes with, by the way, the price on this is 580, 579 bucks. And it comes with a a little DC inverter, AC-DC inverter, lanyard loop, got 12 volt inverter, and a contractor bag. Did this one come with an inverter? Nope. No inverter on that, that big guy. Yeah, so this one comes with a charger for to charge your batteries in the car. Let's put this back in here, kind of keep ourselves organized. And then we'll open up the last one. Uh-oh, I broke the box. Last one here. Man, this is a complicated one. I should have separated this video out into uh, different subsets. 
All right, this one's packaged quite a bit differently, so it comes with a bag. And then it has this little cardboard box thing. Same charger as all the others. This one is 469 bucks or 229 with no batteries. Comes with XC 3.0s, just like all the other base M18 line. And then this has the same exact motor as the others, the other half inch version. It just has the uh, 7 sixteenths hex head. Brushed, brushed motor. And comes with a lanyard ring as well. So you don't drop it on somebody's head from 20 stories up. It's back in the box. Okay, so let's let's sort this out here. Let's go with my initial thoughts of what I want in my cabinet. This one might take a little bit more time to work through. So I think in this setup here, there's no question, none of the base Milwaukee stuff is superior. None of them make any, none of it makes any sense to me. So I think we can take, let's create a little space here and put this behind us. We're gonna take all the base Milwaukee stuff and set it aside. So we don't need this 716 hex. We don't need the half inch friction ring. We don't want the half inch pin detent. We don't want the 3 8 inch uh, compact. We don't want, we don't want the 3 quarter inch high torque. Set that there. We don't want either of the quarter inch hex head, low torque versions. Um, so now we're down to, oh, and we don't want the mid torque half inch pin detent. We don't want that as well. So those can all come out. Okay, so now we're down to fuel. This one is really interesting to me. So we're gonna have to kind of figure out, um, I'm gonna do a little research to figure out what tools support this. Uh, be kind of kind of neat. There's probably some neat neat, uh, neat tools that make sense. So we have our half inch guys. We have our anvil, which I guarantee you that one's going to be in my cabinet. We have the big guys, the three quarters, and the monster one inch. We can pretty much get rid of those. I don't think we're going to need those, but they're cool. Uh, and then we have our little quarter inch, our surge, and our regular. So actually, let's put those here. And then we have our mid-torque stuff. So mid-torque, compact torque to look at. Put our pin detents like this. So that's the fuel line of impact wrenches. So the question is, do you like friction ring or do you like pin detent? Let me grab you a couple tools and show you what it looks like. So on these impact, we should probably be using impact stuff. So let me just grab a real common size. Let's do a BMW 17 mil and half inch and three eighths. So let me set these aside here. Let me just show you the difference. So here's a half inch. Here's the operation of the half inch on how it, how it works. So friction ring, I just have to kind of center it up and find the spot and then I jam it in place. All right, and then pulling it off is easier. At times, it gets a little frustrating. You're having to relook and look again to get it to line up so that I can get it on the friction, past the friction ring.
okay? So that's our friction ring operation. But now you know, the friction ring helps keep it so that it, you know, if I, if I pulled super hard, it comes off, but it keeps it in place, keeps it from vibrating loose. Um, but that's the you know, general operation of a friction ring. And then you have a pin detent. And so what you want to do is you want to take and you want to take your pin. Let me get it lined so you can see it here. So there's our pin, which you can kind of push in and out. And then we have our hole on our socket generally. And so we want to line up our pin, push the pin in, and now it's, it's locked on. But the problem with this is that you have to, especially the pins on the Milwaukee's, you, kind of, you have to push it in. You can't, you can't pull it off. It doesn't come off. And so what I always end up doing is I end up grabbing a pick because it locks it in place. You can use like a little, uh, little flathead if you wanted to. But then you gotta grab, I generally grab a pick tool, kind of reach in there, push the pin in and pop it off. Unless somebody has some, I'm sure somebody's gonna say in the comments, I've been doing it wrong my whole life. Um, you could put it on without putting it in the, you know, with put, not putting the, the circle or the hole in place. But I don't think there's any way to do this, to get this thing off. Is there some special real man technique that I don't know about? I'm always having to take and put something in there, push the pin back so I can remove the, the, the tool or remove the socket. So you have the same thing with the big guy. So you got a big half inch, same story. Friction ring, I just have to get it lined up. So it's, you can see it's a little bit more of a pain to get it lined up to put it on, but then it's way easier to get off versus I've got the pin, find the pin, put the thing on, and then there doesn't come off until you push the pin in and pop it off. I don't know, you tell me. I like the friction ring better, so. The pin to 10 is certainly more secure, but for anything I'm doing, you know, friction ring makes a lot of sense. That's the three eighths versus that's a half inch. So we don't have a three eighths pin to 10, only friction ring. So you see how that works. So now, you have a lot of options. So of these two, go back and watch the, uh, the operation is the same. So go back and watch the, uh, the, uh, the M12 video and you'll see the, the difference between how these drive in. So in my cabinet, I'm getting rid of my original and I'm doing the surge. That's tool number one. This is like the first one you buy, first one you need. Uh, in case you're wondering how you use this thing, you're gonna use hex bit, quarter inch hex keys. So this is where you're gonna put various, you could put in a drill bit, you could put on, you know, like a magnetic, either flathead or, you know, or pH2, like a, a Phillips. Phillips number two, you can put on there. You could do a, like a 5 16 driver. You could do a T25 little bit. You could do a drill bit. You could do an anvil. Here's a half inch anvil with 450 foot pounds of torque. You can take, and I can do the same thing we just talked about with this guy. So 450 foot pounds of torque, 166 foot pounds of torque. Which one do you want? Smooth, 30 bucks more. I think I picked this. But super duper universal and quite a bit of output. The only thing is putting 450 foot pounds of torque through a, you know, a quarter inch drive, you know, probably not recommended. So you're gonna use this mostly to drive in 
take off nuts and bolts and things like that. You complement that with your M12 version of it and you got yourself something there. So that's number one. That's my first tool. Now, I think in a perfect world, I'm gonna have the friction ring version of the compact. I'm gonna have the friction ring version. I'm gonna skip the 3 8 version. I'm not gonna do the 3 8 I'm gonna go the mid-torque half-inch friction ring is what I'm gonna have. And then I'm gonna have the high-torque friction ring. And then I'm gonna have, again, getting into the luxury here, I'm gonna have half-inch anvil, anvil. And then the, maybe this puppy too. So let's get these out of the way. I just, you know, unless you had a dually, I don't think you're gonna need that. This sucker here should be able to take care of a dually by itself. So I'm gonna stick all friction ring because I'm used to that. Uh, and I like how I can take this, you know, take this thing off, but this is the, this is the best darn combination right here. Actually, let me show you an even better combination for doing lugs. Get yourself a Sonic. Get yourself the Sonic um, protected socket set. Put this in place. And you just have to get used to lining it up. It's kind of annoying to put it on. But look at that. Boom. 700 foot, 50 foot pounds of torque. Should be all you need to break pretty much anything. You know, speed one, oh, this is cool. This one has a gauge on it. Speed one is 40 to 75 foot pounds. Number two, so it's called fastening mode, not speed. Fastening mode one is 40 to 75 foot pounds, 54 to 102 Newton meters. Fastening mode two is 75 to 150 foot pounds. Fastening mode three is heavy duty. And then number four is a full power. So every real man's gonna keep it on speed four at all times, or fastening power four. But that thing's pretty cool. And so this one has four speeds. I just noticed that. This one has three speeds. Both are rated at 750 foot-pounds. So I want this. I want this. I maybe want this. I want the surge. I want the, I want the compact. I want the mid. One, two, three, four, five, six out of 23 tools. So let's go ranking. So if you had to have kind of like in the M12 line, I think these two would be the, the two. Depending on your application, you might say these two. Let's skip, you know, skip the, uh, the middle. The problem is you're paying for one key on this. Um, so this one only comes with the one key version. So I think this is number one and two. This is the combo. And then number three, Hmm. I think these two kind of go hand in hand, right? You have the compact and the mid. You know, you could consider doing something like this, like a three eighths and a half. I just think I would stay half inch on all of these, considering how much torque I'm driving through it. But, hmm. You know, you got a quarter, so it might make sense to go quarter, three-eighths, half, half. I don't think I want a mid-torque three-eighths. And then you got your two ultra-luxury items here, these. So combo one, combo two, three, four, six tools six tools that make up the obsessed garage what, what i would put in the obsessed garage cabinet if it's me a one inch never going to use that never going to use a three quarter inch don't like the pin detent version as much because it's a pain even though it's a more secure connection 
I'm torn on whether I'll carry or just make the pin to tent special order for those that want the pin. Because this doesn't come in pin to tent option, I like the getting used to using the same version all the time. I think that's it. I don't know, what do you guys think? I think that's what we're gonna go with. I need to figure out what tools are available. I've never done a 16, 7 16 quick lock type. I certainly don't have any here, but the handle, the handle on this is really long. And it's just kind of a really nice tool. I'd probably, you'd probably take off the lanyard holder. Would make it a little bit less annoying having that thing on top. So that's M18 impacts, kind of dumbed down and simplified a bit. You can kind of see what your options are. Once I make my final decision, you know, make sure to go to obsessgarage.com. We'll have all of these in the store um, and decide which ones I'm going to stock and keep available to you. Um, but yeah, this is fun. I'm excited. I'm excited to have these all organized in my cabinet more than anything. I just think it's freaking super cool. So, anyway, thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. I'll have more and more definitive information on these as time goes on. Thanks for watching.